Oh, you can't see my sweatshirt, but this is a sweatshirt you bought me. Oh my gosh, I forgot Ooh. that I bought you that. I'm such a good sister. I know. That's I know. such a cute sweatshirt. I thought it was fitting for today. So what are you reading, my sis? Oh, my, should I go first again? I went first last time. I can go first if you want. Sis, I... what are you reading? <laughs> well, I'm reading Smilla's Sense of Snow. Oh my gosh, it, tell me more. It's a literary mystery um, by Peter Hague, Hogue, I think. Ooh. He's um, a Danish writer, so it's been translated. Um, and it's a literary mystery set in Copenhagen. And um, have you came... been to recently? No, I haven't. I've been oh, to. Oh. oh, and and they are not close. I oh. thought they were close. They're not. Oh, is Copenhagen in Denmark? Yes. Yeah. Where Hamlet's from. Oh. And the Little Mermaid. Hans Christian Andersen. Oh. Um, is from Denmark. Got anyway, it. it's a mystery. Um, and um, I'm only like 60 pages in, but it's really good. There are parts that like, are like legitimately made me laugh out loud because the mm. uh, main character this woman is like super dry and she is really really smart and kind of like on the like outskirts of society I'm still like oh. learning about her she's like kind of an outsider but she doesn't care mm -hmm. and it's a sad story because basically it starts out that this little boy has fallen off of a roof and the police are just like, it was a terrible accident. And Smilla is like, uh-uh, I don't think so. Um, the other thing is like, when I was thinking about what am I going to read next? I desperately wanted to go to a bookstore. Um, but I like simply have too many books and mm -hmm. I work at a bookstore. So it's like, I really can't, I can't take in any more inventory at this moment. Mm -hmm. So then I went pretend shopping in my own apartment on my own bookshelves. Oh, and fun. I, and then I was like, okay, I need to read a book by an author I haven't read before. So that was one of my criteria. In Actually, your own house? In my own house. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was my only criteria. And then okay. I like made my little stack. And then I read the inside flap of this book. And the main character, Smilla, is described as she is 37, single, childless, moody, and she refuses to fit in. And I was like, oh my God, I love her already. You know how long it was on your bookshelf for? Less than a year. It has okay. been there less than a year, which is good. Mm -hmm. I have, Some of the other ones I picked up have been there for nigh on a decade. <laughs> um, so that's what drew me to it. And so far, it's working for me. But I'm definitely going to need um, a lighter read, I think, for like in between maybe for the mm. evenings because it's like yeah. kind of, it's like kind of dark and kind of sad mm -hmm. um, and that's why I want to hear about your trip to mm. the romance bookstore yes so tell me about that okay so I went there's a new bookstore in Chicago and it's called the last chapter bookshop the bag I came in oh my god and it's an I'm pretty sure it's female owned mm -hmm. in Chicago and it's all romance books. Like everything in there is all romance and they did it like divvied it up by sections. So there was like a sports section, the like fantasy section, then like the contemporary romances. Oh my God. I'm buzzing. I'm so and jealous. So they had like all the Akatar books. And so I picked up this book that I'm about to show you because it was near a, the love hypothesis, which is a oh, book yeah. that we love. And oh. it was also by an author we've also loved before. And so I am reading the soulmate equation <gasps> oh. by Christina Lauren. Yeah. Yay. And I am very much liking it. Um, it is about I love a that one. What? I love that one. I know. I saw you read it and I tried to figure out how many stars you gave it, but then I was like, I'm just going to read it. But it's about a woman named Jess who just turned 30. She has a seven-year-old daughter and she like doesn't date very much. Um, she like 
lives with her daughter is like happy with her life is very busy and her best friend and her like sit at a coffee shop every day and like do their work and this guy comes in and they've like been enamored by him for like years and then they finally like stop him one day and is like I don't remember what it was but he's like oh like I run this business and he it's called like genetic ally or something and it's a dating app that like matches you you give a spit swab and then it puts you in a database and then it matches you with people that are like genetically configured for you to be a match or whatever the next day she has like a really bad day like she thinks she's being like a bad mom and like she had to go to like a pta meeting with like all the couples at her kids um it all yeah so she was like really sad and so then she spontaneously is like whatever I'm going to like send in this spit swab, like whatever, like let's just do it. And she sends it in. And then a few days she, later, she sends it. She's like, she I'm sending it. it. She <laughs> sends it. And then like a few days later, she um, gets like a notification that she matched with someone. And then she finds out that she matched with the owner, the guy that called her like average and was like, you're wearing a sweatshirt, blah, with, blah, with blah. River. River, River, Dr. River. Famously hates sweatshirts. Um, Famously. And so then they have like a really good match and like, they're like, I guess we can, it like becomes sort of like a publicity thing that they're going to try and date. And they're also going to pay her to like do all these appearances. So she's like, okay, great. Like I'll get some money, maybe like see how this works. It's like kind of a fake dating trope, but not really. Cause yeah. like, well, let's see. Cause we were supposed to be compatible. Right. Um, but it's also like kind of unique because it's yes. not actually a fake dating trope. Yes. Um, so it's pretty good. I really like, there's not really any character I don't like. So good. that's a perk. Well, that's good news because Christina Lauren wrote a sequel to the soulmate equation. Oh, the true love experiment, which is features fizzy. Oh, and one last shout out to Christina Lauren, because I really love them as a writing duo. Um, I, I got, I was lucky enough to read an advanced reader copy of the true love experiment last year. And we brought a couple of copies into the bookstore and I was reading the acknowledgements because I used to not read those, but now I do, especially for I- like, love reading the yeah the acknowledgements are like so great just to be like oh these are like this is like uh, all the people that helped you or like the Mm -hmm. songs or whatever um but in theirs oh no wait you know what this wasn't in the acknowledgements I don't there's a part in the true love experiment where because as you noted fizzy is a romance writer Mm -hmm. and she talks about like what is it about like romance that draws people to it and she's she said that it's the fantasy of significance. One moment, Joni. Oh. Yes, Elizabeth. We're podcasting. Oh, you're podcasting. It was- okay, but I did want to hear what you were saying about fizzy. Uh, uh, now that my silly sister has left. Now that your silly sister has left, she she is talking about like why it is that people are drawn to romance mm-hmm. like stories. And she was like, it's all about the fantasy of significance because like reading about these love stories, like you're reading about like how important one person is to another person. And so it's Mm -hmm. like giving into the fantasy of being like that significant to another person is like, you know, like a drug better, better than any drug I've ever tried. Man, oh man. That's anyway. She's great. They're great. Yeah. It's a friend. They're a friend writing duo, which I also Wait. Love. You didn't know that? Christina Lauren is not a person. It's two people, Christina and Lauren, and they are like best friends and they write together. Christina Lauren. I did not know that. Um, speaking of acknowledgments, Patrick Rad and Keith had a really sweet acknowledgement to his wife and like his kids in the empire of pain that i finished oh did he yeah it was really sweet um okay so that's like the theme of today is read the acknowledgements yes read acknowledgements there are treasures 
Yes. Even there. Although the one I was referring to was not in the acknowledgments. Mm. It's just in the book. It's just so, in the book. Read the book. Read the I book. I cannot that believe the- that Christina Lauren is two people. People. Two best buddies. I love that. It's a tough ending. I don't yeah. know how to end it. We could do like a fade out. Ready? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. Did you get it? Yeah. Should we don't do it at the same time? yeah okay thanks for tuning in bye